Well, it's some time after the reaction and the release of Legend of Dragon Ball Tale, and I am still hype as fuck. Let's get into this breakdown. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Ooch, and of course, we all back again once again. How y'all doing today? Alrighty, so like I mentioned, this reaction, which by the way has done phenomenally, and I think that's just a testament to how amazing the work done for Legend A Dragon Ball Tale has really been, and it's amazing and refreshing um, to see how many people love what was shown so of course even though i did a reaction i still like i mentioned in said reaction wanted to make a breakdown of all of the things that i noticed that could you know be easter eggs and or references to other things and just basically breaking down and explaining everything that we saw because let's face it, I just want to keep talking about this and breathing more life into it so that maybe that 0.01% chance that this ever does become more of a real thing. I'm willing to contribute more content just to continue to breathe more hype into this. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so obviously first scene is, you know, this is the, uh, the Saiyans, right? This is the Saiyan flag, their emblem. And now the one thing that I wanted to point out with this, right? So I took a look at this and I was like, okay, is that the original King Vegeta? And I feel like it is, but here's where things get a little interesting within, within this opening shot, right? We literally have all of these different Saiyans. Now, you could argue they're probably just statues of just random sayings, but imagine if there was more to this, okay? Because again, there is a lot more going on within this storyline of Dragon Ball. All right, we'll just refer to it as legend, right? The legend, the legend continuity. Oh, I like how that sounds already, right? So either way, that's uh, what I'm, you know, giving you guys right there. Now, as far as the location, right? The Hydra Galaxy is something that's brand new. This uh, new Dominion timeline, this 31XX, like this takes place in some off future, whatever, in comparison to wherever uh, Dragon Ball story takes place. And I think it's funny how it says AF. That's probably a little Easter egg in and of itself because, you know, after future, that's like a, that's a, that's a reference just basically acknowledging and saying what's up to all the other um fan creations and projects and whatnot like so but of course i was out of this planet vegeta of course that we all know planet vegeta but i did look into seeing if hydra galaxy was even a thing and it's not so i i, I wanted to do my due diligence with that now of course our boys raditz and napa are acting as guards okay now this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting obviously so there's not really much to break down besides that is their little cameo appearance we have napa and raditz my son stay strong your crown is here and your kingdom awaits your return okay so the 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 idea behind this scene right um i did some thinking right and i think i feel like i figured out exactly what the meaning behind um this line that uh the original king vegeta says right he's holding um vegeta's crown and he mentions that your kingdom awaits your return right so later in the in this episode vegeta does like he has this whole epic monologue, which we'll get into, right? And he he says that um, he's going to make an exception to... Like, it's rare for a king to leave his throne, but he's going to make a royal exception just to handle, you know, Broly um, when that time comes, right? So I feel like at this point in time, for whatever reason, Vegeta, right, is the king, right, of, of this region or whatever planet vegeta still exists right in this in this continuity but it almost is it's almost as if like his father is 
acting in for him in his absence or he's just kind of overlooking the throne and holding on to his crown right i think that's od i think that's really freaking cool and i i don't know if you guys think that i'm 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 uh thinking of this any differently or maybe there's a different way to look at it let me know in the comments because I, this is something that i i could probably talk to you guys about several times over so i really did appreciate this little part here and i also thought that originally he was wearing this during the fight but it's so big and when you see vegeta have, he it was probably just a little like i don't know like a little hair tie kind of thing like <laughs> Like, it's probably a little hair tie or whatever when he, like, goes Super Saiyan and breaks up. You guys know what I'm talking about. Stay strong. Your crown is here. Mm -hmm. And your kingdom awaits your return. Yeah, so it's definitely... I, I think it's definitely that. All right, so there's a there's a few things to notice here already. So now these things are just straight up Easter eggs. One, Toriyama is in Dragon Ball. <laughs> One, Toriyama is in Legend Continuity. <laughs> right? That is the that is the the Tori bot you know face that he has in a lot of his little excerpts and whatnot. And shout outs to Akuma. Akuma somehow made it into this uh this continuity. All right, so we got a little bit of Dragon Ball Street Fighter crossover. So that's what's up, right? Um, but obviously those are there's there's a few of these uh, here and there. Ooh, I don't know who this guy is, but he looks cool. All right, so of course this is the like a poster of the upcoming Budokai Tenkaichi, which is the world tournament. And now this this next part right here, okay, this is a direct huge Easter egg, going back all the way back to Dragon Ball. And we're gonna get into that. I just wanted to also shout out that it looks like Piccolo is wanted over here. I don't know what the hell he did, but he's in trouble. Okay, he's probably you know he's probably causing some ruckus over there. And the, the, those damn Namekians, right? Okay, so this fight right here, right? Chi Chi versus Goku. Like I mentioned, this is a direct reference to episode 137. I did the research. Yo, shout out to Kronos, okay? Because I was definitely asking, right? I wanted to make sure that I got this 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 part right. So if you want to be in on the, the discussions, definitely join my Discord. There's a link in the description uh, below, as always. And yeah, I wanted to I wanted to see. I was like, yo, th this definitely was a thing, right? And of course it was because it happened in Dragon Ball where Goku literally fought Chi-Chi before he knew who Chi-Chi was. Well, that's the funny part. He he knew who she was, but he didn't remember her, right? That was the whole point. But it, 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 it's translated very well in in uh in this little episode here. Oh, and uh shout outs to Kami and uh <laughs> And Mr. Popo, their little cameo appearance as well. Can you be? Have we ever met? Have we ever met? Uh huh. If you don't mind, uh, can you just tell me what I forgot so I can remember? All right. So obviously, again, this is all directly going back to Dragon Ball. So if you, if you have not seen Dragon Ball, if you want to go see it for yourself, go look up episode one thirty-seven. Unbelievable! And did you forget the promise you made me? As the promise is obviously that Goku said that. He would marry her. Well, uh, you promised to marry me, Goku. <laughs> and the funny part is, everybody low key had the same reaction when she said that to him in Dragon Ball Two. All right, so of course here's some more, um, <laughs> some more teases. Not really teases, but these are like. There's a lot of uh, cameo appearances within this shot, right? So, of course, we have Yamcha, we have Krillin, Oolong is over here in the corner, uh, there goes Tien and Chaozu. This dude looks like Uncle Ruckus, okay, from Boondocks. I don't really know if that's Uncle Ruckus, but that's really just, that's just mad funny to say. Um, and then, this person looks like a BoJack character, um, and, oh, this is, I'm forgetting her name, damn, that is crazy, but... 
she was another Dragon Ball character, but I'm sorry that I'm forgetting her name at this moment. I'm gonna put it on the screen for you guys right now. I'm sorry, you, you don't don't hate on me too hard. <laughs> All right, but had to. I, I recognized her enough, so here we go. Well, his life's over. <laughs> Krillin says his life's over. And of course, this is where this just completely, I don't want to say derails, but this is where things get so freaking crazy with how, like, they decided to take this reimagining of Dragon Ball, right? Legend, the, 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 the thing that I really want people to understand is that Legend essentially takes what we know, like, some of the great things of Dragon Ball and just amps it up to like a thousand because from here on out this is when we can really see how the story and overall lore that they're gonna introduce and how big of a deal that is and i'm not just saying that because it's my man broly okay let's just make that clear i ain't biased okay well sometimes Okay, so I don't really know if this is an Easter egg or not, but the funny part is the way Chi Chi lost against Goku was actually by taking an air punch from Goku, right? And she, you know, she fell into the wall. And she, well, not fell, but she got, you know, hit into the wall. Goku didn't actually make any kind of actual, he didn't hit her, right? He did an air punch and the force of the punch knocked her ass into the wall so for those that didn't see it or they don't remember that's exactly what happened so i feel like that's kind of a little bit of an easter egg i could be stretching it just to make sense of it but i just thought that was funny uh oh Now, of course, um, I don't have to rewind it, but we did see Goku's tail just uh, come out. So this was that's the first sign of just really being able to tell that, OK, like they're obviously trying to establish a story where the Saiyans are obviously still around, but they still have their tails and they're still intact. Right now, the funny thing is, I didn't notice if Broly had his and I don't think he does. But for all we know, he could. Right. But that's more for later. <laughs> Here comes Vegeta on the sand pod, right? Obviously, we know the sand pod, so the sand pods obviously still exist here. And of course, this is the scouter doing its thing, reading the beats per minute, and then their power levels on the top. And now here is here is one of the 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 best and most obvious Easter eggs. This is a clear Easter egg, right? is the over 9,000. Now, the, of course, the funny part is when <laughs> they were reading that power level, it was definitely not for Broly. So the fact that they added the Easter egg, they applied it to Broly, but then went beyond that was 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 even cooler. Look at that, Over it was over 9,000. It was 9,001, and then it just went crazy. Legend. It got, it, it, you know, it was so crazy to the point where it, it, Vegeta might have been wearing a scouter inside his pod, which this is this is actually a funny thing that I guess I should mention now is that we don't really, we don't see him wearing it. The green light, the gold you fashion. It's not every day that a king leaves his throne, but for you, I make a royal exception. Okay, so this part, right? Look at this. Ready? Vegeta, new king of the Saiyans. Now, before I go into this, how important this is, right? Now, this is one of the biggest crucial things that I could talk about. I'll, I could honestly, at this point, I'm probably gonna cut this, make it its own video, okay? Because I could, I'm, a, I'm gonna have a lot to say about Vegeta. But the one thing that I wanted to point out so far, right, is the is the dialogue that Vegeta says, the green light the 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 gold that he wears right it almost makes me believe that there are certain types of classes in in within the sands right i mean obviously we know that there are warrior races and all that stuff but what if there was like 
different types of families and i think that is something that could definitely be explored you know like there was this clan or this you know what i'm saying obviously they're all saiyans and it's it's something that you'd be able to tell based on their wardrobe or maybe there's some better there's some deeper significance in the fact that you know maybe that gold that broly was wearing was from some somebody else or i don't know right like he is he is the the legendary saiyan or the saiyan of legend and and this is not something that is just a myth like it's a part of their history which is which is insane now let me talk about vegeta okay the fact that he is introduced in this story as the new king okay he's not the prince okay and this is the Vegeta that everybody has been waiting for. Because not only is he the king, it's the attitude, it's the swagger, it's the way he carries himself as a character, and the way he handles himself in front of such an enormous power before him. The Vegeta that we're used to seeing over many years of watching Dragon Ball Z, and now Dragon Ball Super, and even GT, if you want to throw that in there, okay? We're used to seeing Vegeta have certain uh, mannerisms, right? Whenever he's before something that he can feel their presence, their power is enormous, he usually shits his pants, okay? And, and this is, I'm not a Vegeta hater. I love Vegeta. I love his character. I feel like Vegeta as a whole in the original continuity has had some of the most character development out of many other characters within the Dragon Ball franchise. But the fact that he's being introduced to us episode one as the king. And wait, we, we've seen how the fight goes. The, the freaking, I'm sure the video, the, the movie has over 2 million views at this point, right? But he's not, there is not a hint of concern or worry. And he still holds on to the same pride. We're going to see it in the dialogue right here. And of course, Saiyan legend Broly, the man. Oh, let's get him. Let's get it. Mmm. So another way to interpret this, right? And the fact that they introduced Broly as Saiyan legend, right? Think about it. The difference here is that he's not the legendary Super Saiyan, okay? It's not something that, like I mentioned before, it's not a myth. This is real. The, the, the idea of there is a character, his name is Broly, and he is the Saiyan legend. Like this dude... That's it. Like it's there. There's no there. There. There's no like you know a a, a story behind it where it's like it, it, this was a, a a thing, a myth of the past that once upon a time. No, 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 no. This is currently what it is. He is that guy. That's one way to interpret it. Okay, here we go. Now here's the thing, right? And this is this is this. I think makes me a little bit more believable of what i was just saying that broly was has always been this character i mean who knows who knows how old they really are right because that's another thing that you have to think about and consider right because this is its own thing right so aging i mean we already know the saiyans age differently than regular humans do right but imagine how much older they could be in retrospect you know what i'm saying so broly he's the saiyan legend right he is that he's that dude he's up there He's so strong that all his life, Vegeta has been training for this one moment. That kind of that kind of gives you that kind of gives it away a little bit, or gives you uh, that feeling that you know we're leaning towards that idea, right? The other thing I wanted to point out is that my man's wearing some pretty interesting earrings. Now, I don't think they're Patara. I'm sure that some people might have said that i mean hey i could be wrong they could be patara but i don't think they are just for the for the pure sake that i just don't think that they are i think that it's just an accessory for vegeta but um yeah that's it i don't i don't think they're patara i've trained for this one and plus patara is not green like that but hey things change right moment hmm. for the pride of the saiyans for my family now this was awesome okay the fact that 
He said for my family. This was a direct, obvious Easter egg. He threw it to Bulma. That's his wife. But I wonder if Vegeta has a queen already in this story that's not Bulma, right? You have to ask these questions because not everything is, is the same here, okay? There's a lot of changes even though there are some obvious similarities, right? And it seems like Yamcha, who's sitting right next to her, what if they're already dating? Imagine that. Imagine this dude who comes down on a freaking space pod, literally says this whole epic-ass monologue, and it looks like they're having relationship troubles as it is, and then that happens. Oh, Yamcha taking hella L's even in this universe. Oh my god. <laughs> and yes, even you, Kakarot. I gotta replay that. I'm sorry. I know we're doing this breakdown, right? I know that we're not here to just re do a reaction per se, but this letter, like this, this is the importance. This is how epic and amazing you could tell how OD Vegeta is here. This is the Vegeta that everybody has been waiting for, and it, they, they managed to do some shit that they've they're working towards with these characters in in less than ten minutes, bro. Like. <laughs> This shit is ridiculous how good it is. Here we go. And yes, even you, Kakarot. Saiyan legend, hear me! Today, a god, god falls. Oh! Bones to the dust. Ashes to the wind! Yo, oh my god. Okay, alright, alright, alright. So, I gotta break it down, right? Okay, so obviously, what do we hear? We hear the opening theme song to dragon ball super beautiful choice to use that as one of the background fighting songs for this epic fight that's about to happen between vegeta and the saiyan legend broly right now the one thing i wanted to break down really quick is something that he says in this monologue he says he's gonna fight for his family and yes even you kakarot right so that just makes me believe that you know Maybe this whole idea of like these different families or maybe, you know, they have different types of tribes or like like corners or, you know, what if there's more than one planet of Vegeta? What if there's like other planets that they have, right? And Kakarot, right? Goku's line, like his his family bloodline is of like the like the like the polar not polar opposite, but like the parallel opposite to Vegeta's family. You know what I'm saying? Like because he 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 came to earth knowing who he was already okay and who knows if this was the first or second time that they're having this encounter right but we'll get into that once we, we you know we see them interact a little bit more and vegeta goes straight to super saiyan right all right so just in case anyone thinks that yo is he in ultra instinct no it's, it, it, sometimes so here's the thing with animation right depending on the angle and the other kind the other types of like lights and other effects that are happening right um and the distance uh sometimes in a lot of situations coloring will change but as you see for the majority of the fight he, it's it's the gold it's the yellow you know what i'm saying like it, don't worry don't get ahead of yourselves it's not a freaking ultra instinct okay <laughs> See, look, there's more gold right there. Mm. Yes, beautiful, right? And so, so here's the here's the, here's the here's the great the great part about this. And I'm 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 really breaking this down like OD right now. Okay, notice how Vegeta and Broly are trading blows, right? It's not too decisive, and every time Vegeta gets an opportunity, he turns it up, right? Because he he oh. We got no, we cannot take this dude lightly. He's not, again, let me repeat this. He's not taking him lightly. And we already know how, we were, we're used to how Vegeta is, okay? When he feels like he has a little bit of an advantage or if he's so self-righteous, you know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not this Vegeta. This is King, new King Vegeta. Goes all out. Look at that. Oh. You're not pulling no punches. Mmm. Yes. Oh, tossed. Ooh. And the, the Broly with the offensive. Uh, now, yo, Broly broke his ribs. 
straight up just breaks his freaking ribs. Now, I can't, I'm not gonna lie, I can't recall them ever doing this kind of a shot in Dragon Ball before where you like see the x ray and the bones breaking or anything like that. But this was definitely something that was super dope to see. And this part, yo, this part, if you guys remember my reaction, I actually, like, what, what, what are we used to seeing? right what are we used to seeing we're used to seeing when someone gets hit out of their 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 saiyan forms or their transformation we're just like ah shit they're fucked right not here vegeta just turns it right back on no dilly dally no delaying no nothing he is here because he's been training his whole life for this moment dude and and even with broken ribs, bro, he's not phased. He is the king. He's got a, he's got so many purposes that he just stated for the pride of his sayings, for his family, and even you, Kakarot. That's fire. So he turns it right back on, tosses it right back to the freaking stage. That was OD. The bouncing of the freaking, that was amazing. Amazing work. Final. Now, unfortunately, that's the only time we see Final Flash. We do not see any Gallic Gun, right? But I would, I would, uh, I would assume that Final Flash is more favored over Gallic Gun. But hey, I'm sure that some people that might be watching this right now, they're probably more Gallic Gun fans, or whatever. But that we do see the, we do technically see the Final Flash. We see the beam come out, but unfortunately, Broly yeeted that shit. And here we go. He's on, he's on the offensive now. Mm. Hit some. Oh! See, like this happened multiple times. And now this is something brand new they've never done before, okay? This is so, like, the idea, right? And, and we're going to get into this, right? Vegeta earlier, he said that the green light, he referred to Broly's light as the green light. First of all, he referred to his power as green light. So. It's, it, it, it is basically implying that the Saiyans carry the power of light, right? And, there's a, and, 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 it's, and it's how it's used, the color, right? And apparently it's not just something that they use for themselves. Apparently it can, it can be um, manipulated in a way where you can weaponize it. That concept, that idea is so sick yeah i never would have thought that i would ever see lightsabers or something of that nature in dragon ball and the fact that they are doing it here and how they're doing it how they're presenting it it's beautiful it makes so much sense and it's super dope super dope so i gotta give them the kudos for that right so vegeta he's about to make this freaking sword john and it's so sick but notice, remember, it, it's the light. He's using the light, the Saiyan light, right? He goes, he's in Super Saiyan, but he's gonna, he's gonna take that and he's gonna use it as a weapon. And look, see, now nah, he's not Super Saiyan no more. It's all, all that energy is in that freaking sword. And for the first time, I don't think they've ever had a decapitation like that. This was gruesome, okay? But Broly's never lost any limbs. He he never has. So this is this was a first, right? I and I and I I thought that was insane. And this is where shit gets real, okay? This is where shit gets real. Ugh. That I've seen this, I've watched this so many times, and watching that part never gets any easier. I cannot believe. Oh my god, that, that was so gross. I'm not. Don't worry, I'm not gonna freaking rewind it or anything. But my god, that was insane. <laughs> but of course, you know, Saiyans are they act on emotion, or you know, they use emotion as a way to help them unlock things that are lying deep within themselves. And we see that within Goku. Now, 
I'm sure I don't even have to break this part down. The song used, again, the earlier Limit X Survivor, the Dragon Ball Super Terminal Power opening theme, an iconic theme song for that time. But you want to talk about iconic themes. Now, here's, here's the importance of this thing, guys. And I, and I have to give this some, some proper time to talk about how important this is. Listen, I'm not here to talk about what version of Dragon Ball Z you grew up on. I'm not here to talk about which version of Dragon Ball Z is better. But what I am here to acknowledge are the facts, right? And the fact of the matter is, is that when you hear this song, especially with that pose that of course is an easter egg to when goku first went super saiyan against frieza okay you combine all these things and you you cannot ignore the impact of this song the song of the super saiyan 3 ascension when goku first whips it out against majin buu when you and i'm sure a lot of us okay a lot of us watch it in japanese but a lot of us watch it on tv okay and when we saw it on TV, it was obviously in English. And because of that, they had the Bruce Falconer soundtrack. And despite how some people or a lot of people, however many people might feel about the overall songs that Bruce Falconer provided for Dragon Ball Z for the Funimation dub, this individual track is still to this day one of the most popular anime tracks in history. <laughs> Okay, there's no denying it. There is no denying. You can listen to your Japanese tracks all you want. And sure, I'm going to as well. But the fact that they chose to use this song for this crucial moment, it makes and and, and it, it provides a deeper weight and feeling of everything. Okay, because at this moment, I, I couldn't, I, I was about to cry. I was literally like, okay, like they know how to strike the nerves, the good ones. Okay. There, that is, um, I'm, I'm just spitting all these reasons as to why this work is so beyond perfection that it, it just goes without saying. Like, it's my favorite. It is literally my favorite. And another, just a quick reminder, please subscribe to their Patreon. Not mine. Fuck my Patreon. Okay? We, if we want this to get a part two and more parts in the future... They need to have your direct support. And and, it, and it, it, look, all man's has is a $1 and $3 freaking tiers. Okay? Please. Please consider becoming a Patreon for them. For Studio Stray Dog. Please. They need the funds so that way they can continue this. Because we need more legends. So here we go. Now right here, Goku is unlocking his light, his light from within. At this part, I thought he was about to go Super Saiyan 4. As soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that shit, I was like, oh my fucking god. And Vegeta, look at that smile. Vegeta's like, oh yeah, he's here. Oh. <laughs> And who is he, you might add? The savior from heaven. <laughs> Probably one of the most epic things I've ever seen. Especially for Dragon Ball. For something like Dragon Ball. Because we've never seen anything like this. I mean, this is probably one of the closest things that they could directly reference to the original. Where all of this could, was originally, originally inspired from. Shout outs to freaking Journey to the West, right? That right there, hey, ladies and gentlemen, is not fucking Ghost Rider, okay? That is Wukong. Now, again, I have not seen all, I have not seen a single thing of Journey to the West, right? So I'm not, I'm not gonna try to educate you guys on something I don't know, right? But I will say, this is definitely paying more a homage and, and, and respect and reference to Wukong, okay? Because Wukong is what? The Monkey King. Look at this motherfucker. He is a crazy Monkey King right now. Look at that Son Goku. Wukong is Son Goku, okay? Like, like, he's not Ghost Rider. Stop. Look at this. Move, he, he completely moves around like a monkey. 
He is out here. Faster, stronger. Guys. First of all, and, and let me ask you this. Did he come with a fucking motorcycle too? You dumb. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Now this part. This part I was not ready for. I wasn't expecting. Now the one thing I wanted to actually. Uh, I didn't even get to say this in the reaction. Because there was so much happening. I was just completely mind fucked at that point. Because. Here I'll show you. Yeah, go Ross. He fucking does a Kamehameha with Vegeta. Okay. Now. What happened here? Okay, Vegeta was not even powered up. He was he he was in his base state. But do you notice how Goku? Okay, when he's in this state, it's almost as if like he's somebody else completely, right? And and Vegeta just knew when to, I guess, work with him, team up with him, or whatever. What I'm trying to say is, is that. Goku right now is so strong that he was able to sync and share his light, his Saiyan light with Vegeta, and now they're both in their Super Saiyan states, however way you want to call it, right? Dude, they are the golden warriors, bro. Like, they, he, he sa Vegeta says this after the fight's over, but, but here, the other interesting part, right? It seems like the Kamehameha wave is a more prominent technique than it in, in other, you know than, than otherwise right because like we've never seen uh vegeta do kamehameha outside of and 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 for those for those that were like wait, he never done that no actually technically in a video game which obviously doesn't matter right but it has happened before i think it was like one of the um budokai it's like budokai on the psp um I, I i remember that and i was like what like I, that that was kind of crazy right but you know Again, it doesn't matter, but you know, if you want to count that for what it is, but this this right here, I will I will fuck that game, okay? I want to acknowledge this as the first time we're seeing Vegeta doing the Kamehameha wave, right? And no less, they're both one-handed freaking crossed up. I thought that they were going to fuse. Like I said, I was too excited. I was too mindful. I thought they were going to fuse for whatever freaking reason through some new method, right? Cuz as long as they're touching, right? They crossing the arms, boom. But Instead, they're doing a unison Kamehameha. And it's a whole fist. Did you see that? It's like a Hadouken. It's literally like a fireball. So if you play Street Fighter, and if you go, look. I'll rewind it a little bit. Look at that. It's an actual fireball. It's a fucking fist. And I like how Broly's is like a little, like it has a little monster in there. That's, that, I don't I mean, that, that's actually kind of cool. And this is even cooler. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> there's a dragon, right? And then the dragon just eats the fucking shit and destroys Broly. Beautiful, truly amazing. <laughs> Okay, and then of course this part right here when Goku he remembers right again This is referencing back to the Dragon Ball episode 137 when Goku and Chi Chi fought in the world tournament and Of course after Chi Chi reminded him of who the hell she was and all that then yes, and he remembered and everything remember. It's Chi Chi, right? And her ass was knocked out Kakarot. Stop calling me that so, I think what we could take from this moment, right, is that they do know each other. This is not the first time that they have met because Vegeta straight up pulls up, right, and he's already calling him by his name, his birthright name. And Goku doesn't like that. Similar to how that, you know, when they first had their interaction with Dragon Ball Z, like Goku didn't like him when he called him that, but, you know, he just, it, it is what it is, right? That name is your birthright. For you, just like I, are the legacy of a proud race of golden warriors. I love how they refer to themselves as golden warriors. That shit is so sick. 
We are the keepers of the primal light. The primal light, bro. The keepers of the primal light. So I wonder if all Saiyans get that. I wonder if this is a thing that's only like exclusive to special folks that are Saiyans or, or you know, or, you know, everyone has it, right? But, you know, everyone's light is different. Your light is out of control and must be refined to be useful. So his light is out of control, right? So there's something I do want to bring up really quick. Okay, so shout outs to someone from the chat, right? In the comment section that uh was from this is from the reaction right so this person i i said that i was going to bring this up right so check this out so this is what they think they think that vegeta's super saiyan form is the refined version of that form that he was telling goku about right which is right here this is what he said right because his light is out of control okay however and that actually makes sense and we'll talk about that right so then he goes on to say when goku changed it was that primal version of Super Saiyan, and with that, and with time and proper training, he can achieve what Vegeta looked like he fought when he fought Broly. And that dude, if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Because let's think about this, right? The primal light. If they're primal, primal, what is it referring to? The monkeys. Monkey see, monkey freaking do, right? Okay? The primal light is their source of power that this is why they're golden warriors because maybe that super saiyan right is what gives them that name right because they're they're this strong warrior race golden warriors right and all that stuff right so if he learns how to control it then yes goku will probably look like how what we're used to seeing super saiyan right but this form right because they're already more uh in intact with their their saiyan heritage like you know obviously vegeta pulled up with a tail right they're not cutting that shit off right goku still had his right and i want you guys to imagine that this is essentially this universe's way of handling the ozaru state right because I've had my theories about primal instinct. I've been saying this for many years, right? Ever since the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, I was calling it primal instinct because Broly introduced a concept and an idea that no one was talking about. The fact that he was able to unlock his Ozaru type of power without having a tail and without turning into an ape, he was in an Ozaru state, okay? So... What would have happened, okay, if being a character like Broly, he's a freak, right? He was born like a mutant, essentially, right? And he's so powerful, he's so out of control, that what if he didn't need a moon? Imagine if he had a tail. He would have forced his way to what we understand as a Super Saiyan 4. But I don't think they're going to call it that when that time comes. I believe what they're going to call it they're going to stick to a more primal kind of name. And I added the instinct because, of, of course, Ultra Instinct, you know, Ultra Ego now and all that stuff, right? And it's all about the instincts, right? So Primal Instinct would be a perfect name. Now, the fact that we have Primal Light here, that's that would be kind of fire, right? So I think that that's something to actually pay some, cl some close attention to. Um, and, and yeah, I think that you know having this kind of prim this primal state and and the thing is he was so strong right it was it was almost as if like you know, like one would believe and let's not let's not get this twisted right this primal light this this warrior from heaven the fact that goku's light is out of control but he was so strong doesn't necessarily mean that he was automatically just gonna be stronger than broly because that's yet to be seen okay i'm sorry to be that guy okay because at the end of the day it still it took the two of them to defeat him right but one-on-one -on -one, we don't know yet but that that just makes it more interesting to talk about and i'm sure that'll be a whole another thing uh later when that goes on so that would be actually super interesting however here's the other way i wanted to interpret this right so the idea of this being the state before you hit that super saiyan or you know i don't know if they're gonna call it like you know super or super light light i don't know right the, the name doesn't matter but the idea that i'm gonna i'm about to talk about right here right now is is that since it goes back to the whole family thing right if vegeta comes from his family and kakarot right he's obviously coming from another type of family within their saiyan uh you know all their, their blood well a different type of bloodline essentially right 
what if Goku, right, he was born special just like how Broly was in his own way, right? And the fact that Vegeta, clearly a king, he knows how to control his power, right? And maybe because he knows of Goku's background, the fact that they called his form, he's the savior from heaven. He's not just... He's not just some super saiyan, okay? Because imagine if he does, if he does learn how to control his light, then maybe at that point he might actually look a little bit closer to what Wukong actually looks like. In other, in other words, he'll definitely look way more super saiyan 4-esque, obviously, is what I'm trying to refer to. So there's so many different ways to interpret this and to, to, to take this in. But And this is why I need this to continue. I need this to carry on. And I, I need y'all to just subscribe to their Patreon, okay? The link will be in my own description this time, okay? Because the last time I put the link to the original video, which... Their description had the Patreon, but I'm going to have the video and the Patreon, okay, so that y'all have no excuses. I'm making it super easy for you guys. We need this shit to fucking continue, please. This is probably one of the, the best things, if not the greatest thing to ever happen to this fucking IP. A fan project finally cracked it, finally did it, and I've never been this hype over something that a fan made. No disrespect to Absalon or to Deliverance or to any of these other works. This shit hits completely different. So let's go. Let's continue. Your days under the sun are numbered, Kakarot. So marry that woman while you still have the chance. And come with me. So this part, at first I thought like... Does this mean like Goku has like a limited time to live? Like, are they, is that an Easter egg in and of itself from another concept or just another event that happened in Dragon Ball Z? Because let's not forget, Goku fucking dies, right? And not just by, you know, he, he didn't just get like shot, right? But I'm talking about he was, me he was, he was gonna have a virus. Do you, do we not remember this? He was about to have a virus. And in Trunks' timeline, he died off that virus, okay? And it's because of Trunks with the antidote that was able to continue or to, to, to keep Goku alive in the other timeline, right? What if they take that and that's what Vegeta meant? I mean, that's one way to look at it, right? Or maybe he was just referring to his time being numbered if he don't actually, you know come with Vegeta for this impending war that's about to happen. We have to prepare. For what? War. <clears throat> God damn it. Now, what could the war be referring to, right? What is some ideas that the war could be referring to? And here's one thing that I did think of. You know the one thing that they never talked about or paid any kind of reference or mention to in this who else is popular in the villain territory in dragon ball z Furiza. imagine if this war is going to consist of a frieza army right i'm talking frieza the ginyu force the frieza force obviously and then uh like cooler king cold like imagine there's other frieza race characters involved as well like that part could be actually od and it could be that 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 can go in many different ways it could literally be anybody it could be a war within their own race it could be a saiyan war for all we know right but i think that would probably make a little bit more sense but who knows what if this war right has something to do with broly because obviously we know that wasn't it right so let's break down this final part Broly got knocked literally so far out into outer space that he he's in a moon. Now, also, the other thing I wanted to know uh, about this, does this confirm that Saiyans in this universe can actually just breathe in space? Because I think that would be a little bit better to do because 
man, these debates over the years of, oh, saying, can Saiyans breathe in space? Can they breathe in space? Oh, but look, they're fighting in space. There's been a lot of inconsistencies. I'd rather them for here, they, yes, for sure, fine, yes, they can breathe in space, just let it happen, right? Because clearly Broly's still alive, right? So here we go. And I said this in my reaction. I said, he now has developed, like he, this, this version of Broly is, is now better than the original, the first original Broly, right? And, and I, I know that it's, you know, it's, it's him just saying someone else's name. I mean, clearly it's not like he can't, just, he can't normally talk, right? Because we've heard Broly say, like, actually have actual sentences. But the fact that, Goku, Kakarot, right? Broly has had a grudge against Kakarot. But now he has a grudge against Vegeta. So it makes you wonder, what is the reason here? Why is Broly hating on both Goku and now Vegeta? We obviously know why. Uh, Vegeta is now on the chopping block for Broly because he now helped Kakarot essentially defeat him. So now Broly has a reason why he is, he's about to go after Vegeta now. He has a reason to go after the king. Before, he his only intention and purpose was to just take out Kakarot, right? But we don't know the reason why here, and I hope to God it is not because Goku was crying like a baby as a baby next to Broly, who was also a fucking baby. So, I, but I have all good faith that there is no head ass with Legend of Dragon Ball Tale because I took basically an hour to break down what was less than 10 minutes worth of a fan project that took four years for them to make, uh, mind you. So, again, this was. An amazing experience this was a beautiful beautiful project that literally explores the great things that dragon ball z and dragon ball had to offer while showing us potential as to how crazy and how much more lore can be explored with this franchise man and and honestly i think and there's no way that no one at toei hasn't seen this i really hope that somebody up there takes notice of this and they do something that would surprise a lot of people and that's to simply acknowledge it to let it live and then beyond that to even bring these guys on or just give what's already here the stamp of approval imagine the best case scenario is if they literally fund them right that would be the best thing that they could have that could they could ever do because honestly i'm sure after watching this i'm sure people are going to wonder like bro this is a perfect example as to how much more they could be doing with dragon ball i mean super we're getting a lot of things happening and super has definitely opened up the universe the, the many universes quite literally of you know dragon ball the world of dragon ball outside of that super dragon ball heroes is literally the only thing right now that captivates the many many multiverses and timelines and whatnot but it's it's crazy and it's literally all over the place but again that's something that exists that continues to this day. So the idea is, it's not that they can't, but they just have to want to do it themselves. So, and if we're in a world now where even the creators are being reckless and they're being very vague and saying like, oh yeah, like, you know, the movies from back then, sure, they matter. And, 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 and trying to confuse people with their words and saying like, oh, Superhero is a direct sequel to Broly, which, which, which is going to confuse people to thinking that the current manga arcs that have clearly taken place since Broly and then up until, uh, you know, end of Z and whatever, and, you know, obviously Superhero takes place before end of Z. Like, I'm tired of the confusion, and I'd rather them at least do something so dope and at least just acknowledging this for what it is and letting it rock. I just hope that we do, at the end of the day, get more legend 
a dragon ball tale so with all that being said guys if you're still here watching this i hope you guys enjoyed this complete breakdown of legend of dragon ball tale if there's anything that i missed or anything else that you maybe saw that i did not and you want to talk more about it do let me know in the comments because let me tell you i will make any excuse to continue talking about this and making more content for this like i said again a big shout out to studio stray dog and everyone involved I love y'all to death, and I really do hope that we get more in the future. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that good stuff. Supporting links will be in the description as always. And make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves. May the power protect you. Keep it locked with it right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, stay inside. I'll see you guys next time.